In the beginning there was nothing. No light, no darkness, no sound. Only an infinite void. A blank canvas waiting for the first stroke of creation. Then, from this emptiness, a spark ignited. A force beyond comprehension, a power beyond measure stirred. This was the genesis, the birth of the universe, the moment when everything we know and experience began. In the book of Genesis, the story opens with a simple yet powerful phrase. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. These words, imbued with ancient wisdom, paint a vivid picture of a universe born from the will of a divine creator. The vast expanse of space dotted with stars, galaxies and planets all sprang forth from a realm beyond our comprehension. Before the first ray of light, before the first atom took shape, there was only God, an eternal, omnipresent being existing outside the confines of time and space. And within this divine essence, the blueprint for the cosmos was conceived. The idea of a universe teeming with life, beauty, and endless possibilities. Let there be light. And in that instant, the universe exploded into existence. This was not merely the appearance of light as we know it, but a fundamental division between existence and non-existence. Let there be light. The book of Genesis tells us that God's first act of creation was to speak light into existence. Let there be light, he commanded, and from the darkness a radiant glow emerged. Imagine a universe shrouded in darkness, an endless expanse of nothingness. Then, picture a single point of light, a brilliant spark that pierced the void. This wasn't just the light we see from the sun or stars. This was light in its purest form, the very essence of energy and creation. It was the light of possibility, the spark that ignited the universe and set in motion the chain of events that would lead to life itself. The darkness, which had been absolute and all-encompassing, was now pushed back, yielding to the brilliance of this newfound light. The creation of light wasn't just a physical phenomenon, it was a symbolic act. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. Imagine the newly formed earth, bathed in the warmth of the newly created light. As the earth turned, this light would gradually fade, giving way to the coolness of darkness. With the creation of light, a new concept emerged, the separation of light and darkness. This wasn't just about the physical presence or absence of light. It was about establishing a rhythm, a cycle, a fundamental order to the universe. This cycle of day and night established from the very beginning became the heartbeat of the planet, a constant reminder of the divine order underpinning creation. This separation also marked the beginning of time as we know it. Before the creation of day and night, time was a meaningless concept. But with the establishment of this cycle, time began to flow, measured by the ebb and flow of light and darkness. Each rotation of the earth, each transition from day to night, marked the passing of time, the unfolding of creation. The establishment of day and night wasn't just a practical necessity. It was a reflection of the balance inherent in the universe. And so the first day of creation came to an end. The universe, once a formless void, now pulsed with light and darkness, a testament to the creative power of God. The stage was set, the canvas prepared, for the wonders that were yet to come. Imagine standing on the edge of that first evening, witnessing the sun dip below the horizon, painting the sky in hues of orange and purple. The air would have been filled with the sounds of a young earth, the gentle hum of creation still reverberating through the atmosphere. It was a time of profound peace, a moment of divine satisfaction as God surveyed his handiwork. The first day was not an end, but a beginning. It was the first chapter in the grand narrative of creation, a testament to the boundless potential that lay dormant within the void. With each passing day, the universe would continue to unfold, revealing new layers of complexity and beauty, all orchestrated by the divine hand. The story of the first day is a reminder that even in the face of overwhelming darkness, there is always hope. It teaches us that from the simplest of beginnings, the most extraordinary things can emerge. 
and it instills in us a sense of awe and wonder at the power and majesty of the Creator who brought it all into being. On the second day of creation, God turned his attention to the newly formed heavens. The book of Genesis describes how God created a vault or firmament to separate the waters. Picture this, a boundless expanse of swirling primordial waters stretching in all directions. Then imagine a vast dome, a shimmering transparent barrier rising from the depths, dividing the waters. This wasn't a solid structure as we might imagine it but a division, a boundary created by God's command. This firmament, later called the sky, was not merely a physical separation, but a symbol of order and purpose. It represented God's desire to bring structure and definition to the universe, to create distinct realms within the vastness of creation. The creation of the firmament was a testament to God's power and precision. With a single word, he brought order to the chaotic waters, establishing a clear boundary between the heavens above and the earth below. This act of separation was not about exclusion, but about creating distinct environments, each with its own unique purpose in the grand scheme of creation. The firmament, a symbol of divine order, also served as a canvas for God's creative artistry. It was upon this transparent dome that he would later place the sun, moon and stars, transforming the sky into a breathtaking spectacle of celestial wonders. This act of adornment further emphasized the beauty and intentionality woven into every aspect of creation. With the firmament in place, the waters were divided into two distinct realms, the waters above the firmament and the waters below. The waters below we can understand as the oceans and seas that would eventually cradle life. But the waters above, they spark our imagination hinting at a realm beyond our immediate perception. Imagine a vast reservoir of water held aloft by the invisible hand of God, suspended above the firmament. Some ancient cultures envisioned these waters as a source of rain, a celestial ocean that nourished the earth below. Others saw it as a protective barrier, shielding the earth from harmful cosmic forces. Regardless of the specific interpretation, the concept of waters above speaks to a universe far grander and more mysterious than we can fully comprehend. It suggests a divine order that extends beyond our limited human perspective, reminding us that there are realms of existence beyond our immediate grasp. This separation of waters also serves as a metaphor for the human experience. We often find ourselves caught between different realms, the physical and the spiritual, the known and the unknown, the earthly and the divine. Just as the firmament divides the waters, we too navigate boundaries, seeking balance and understanding in a world of dualities. As the second day of creation drew to a close, the universe had undergone a remarkable transformation. The chaotic void had given way to a realm of order and structure. The firmament stood as a testament to God's power a shimmering boundary separating the waters above from the waters below. Imagine the stillness of that second evening, the newly formed sky, a pristine canvas of azure, reflected in the calm waters below. The air, cleansed by the separation of elements, would have been crisp and fresh, carrying the faint hum of creation. It was a moment of divine satisfaction, a pause before the unfolding of even greater wonders. The creation of the firmament, and the division of waters marked a significant step in the formation of the universe. God, with unwavering purpose, was shaping a cosmos of breathtaking beauty and complexity. Each act of creation, a testament to his boundless imagination and unwavering love for the world he was bringing into being. The second day, a symphony of divine action reminds us that from chaos, order can emerge. It teaches us that even in the face of overwhelming vastness, there is purpose and intention. Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. Imagine the vast expanse of water covering the entirety of the Earth's surface. Then, picture the waters stirring, obeying the divine command, drawing back as if by an unseen hand. As the waters receded, 
they revealed something new, something miraculous, dry land. The earth, once entirely submerged, now offered a glimpse of its hidden form. It was a moment of profound transformation, a testament to the power of God's word to reshape and redefine creation. The receding waters didn't simply vanish, they gathered together, forming the seas and oceans we know today. This separation of land and water wasn't arbitrary. It was a deliberate act of creation, designed to nurture and sustain life in all its diverse forms. This act of separation also speaks to the importance of boundaries in the natural world. The shoreline, that delicate dance between land and sea, represents a place of both division and connection. It's a reminder that even within the harmony of creation, distinctions exist, each element playing a vital role in the balance of life. With the waters gathered, the dry ground appeared, a vast expanse of rock and soil stretching out under the newly formed sky. God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called seas. This wasn't just a naming ceremony, it was an act of definition, imbuing these newly formed features with purpose and identity. Imagine the Earth's first continent, rising from the depths, sculpted by the receding waters. Mountains would have pierced the sky, their peaks shrouded in mist. Valleys would have stretched out like emerald ribbons, carved by the flow of ancient rivers. And vast plains would have sprawled towards the horizon, a blank canvas awaiting the touch of life. This newly emerged land wasn't barren and lifeless. It possessed the potential for growth and abundance. Within the soil, dormant seeds awaited the life-giving touch of water and sunlight. The very air, cleansed by the separation of elements, crackled with the energy of new beginnings. The emergence of land marked a pivotal moment in creation. A transition from a world of water to a world where life could take root and flourish. It was a testament to the boundless creativity of God, who transformed a watery abyss into a realm of stunning diversity and beauty. Section 3. The Third Day With the creation of land and sea, the earth took on a form recognizable to us today. Continents stretched across the globe, embraced by the vast expanse of the oceans, the stage was set, the canvas prepared for the next act of creation, the emergence of plant life. Imagine the earth bathed in the warm glow of the newly formed sun. Then, picture tiny green shoots pushing through the soil, reaching for the light. Ferns unfurling their delicate fronds, mosses carpeting the rocks in vibrant hues, and trees stretching their branches towards the heavens. God commanded the earth to produce vegetation seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And so it was. The once barren landscape erupted in a riot of colors, shapes, and textures. The creation of plant life wasn't just about adding beauty to the world. It was about establishing the foundation for all other life forms. Plants, through the miracle of photosynthesis, would convert sunlight into energy, releasing oxygen into the atmosphere, and creating a world where animals and eventually humans could thrive. Section 1. Celestial Choreography On the fourth day of creation, God turned his attention to the heavens. The firmament created on the second day stretched across the earth like a vast empty canvas. Let there be lights in the vault of the sky, God commanded, to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. Imagine standing on that newly formed earth, gazing up at the sky for the first time. The sun, a blazing ball of fire, emerges on the horizon, casting its golden rays across the land. As the earth turns, the light shifts painting the sky in hues of orange and purple before yielding to the soft embrace of twilight. Before the creation of the celestial lights, day and night existed, but they were not clearly defined. Now, with the sun, moon and stars in place, time itself takes on a new dimension. Days are measured by the sun's journey across the sky, months by the cycles of the moon, and years by the Earth's orbit around the sun. This celestial choreography wasn't merely functional, it was a testament to God's artistry and precision. 
He placed the celestial bodies with care, orchestrating their movements to create a symphony of light and shadow, a cosmic dance that would mark the passage of time for millennia to come. Section 2. Timekeepers of the Cosmos The sun and moon, those celestial giants, were given dominion over day and night. The sun, a radiant beacon of life-giving energy, would govern the day, while the moon, a gentle reflector of the sun's light, would illuminate the night. Imagine the warmth of the sun on your skin, the feeling of its energy invigorating your body, as it reaches its zenith in the sky. The day is alive with activity, a time for work, exploration, and creation. Then, as the sun dips below the horizon, a sense of peace descends. The moon, a silver crescent in the velvet sky, casts long shadows and invites contemplation. The stars, scattered across the vast expanse of the firmament like diamonds on black velvet, were not merely decorative. They too served a purpose. They were to be signs to mark sacred times and days and years. Ancient civilizations would use the stars for navigation, their constellations serving as celestial maps guiding travelers across land and sea. The stars, with their twinkling light, also inspired a sense of awe and wonder. They reminded humanity of the vastness of the universe and the mystery that lay beyond the Earth's embrace. Looking up at the stars, one couldn't help but feel a sense of connection to something far greater than oneself. Section 3. The Fourth Day With the creation of the celestial lights, the universe took on a new dimension. The heavens, once an empty canvas, now pulsed with light and movement. The sun, moon and stars, each in its appointed place, marked the passage of time, guiding the rhythms of life on Earth. Imagine standing on that fourth evening, the air cool and crisp, as the first stars begin to appear in the darkening sky. The celestial dome, a breathtaking spectacle of light and wonder stretches overhead, a testament to the power and majesty of the Creator. The creation of the celestial lights marked a pivotal moment in the creation narrative. It brought order and structure to the flow of time, and it illuminated the heavens with a beauty that would inspire awe and wonder for generations to come. It was a testament to God's boundless creativity and his unwavering love for the world he was bringing into being. The fourth day, a symphony of celestial wonder, reminds us that there is a time for everything under the heavens. It teaches us to look beyond ourselves and marvel at the intricate workings of the cosmos, and it instills in us a sense of gratitude for the beauty and order that surrounds us, a beauty and order that points to a creator of infinite wisdom and power. Let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. Imagine the oceans, vast and blue, silent until this moment. Then picture a surge of life, an explosion of color and movement as God's creations fill the waters. From the smallest plankton to the largest whales, the seas come alive with an astonishing diversity of creatures. Fish, shimmering silver and gold, dart through coral reefs, their scales catching the sunlight filtering down from above. Shellfish, their intricate patterns a testament to nature's artistry, cling to rocks, while jellyfish, ethereal and graceful, pulse through the water. The depths, too, are filled with life. Creatures that glow in the darkness, their forms adapted to the crushing pressure and eternal night. Giant squid, their tentacles longer than a ship is wide, roam the abyssal plains, while bioluminescent creatures light up the darkness like living constellations. This sudden burst of life in the oceans is a testament to God's boundless creativity and his love for variety and abundance. Each creature, from the tiniest shrimp to the mightiest whale, is designed with care, perfectly adapted to its environment and role in the intricate web of life. Let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. Imagine the silence of the skies, broken only by the rustle of wind through the newly formed forests. Then picture a flash of wings, a burst of color as birds take to the air for the first time. Birds of every size and color fill the skies. Eagles, with their keen eyesight, soar high above the mountains, while hummingbirds, their wings a blur as they hover, 
sip nectar from brightly colored flowers. Parrots, their plumage a rainbow of hues, chatter amongst themselves, their calls echoing through the forests. Waterfowl, their webbed feet designed for paddling, glide across the surface of lakes and rivers, while shorebirds, their long legs perfect for wading, search for food along the water's edge. Each bird, with its unique song and plumage, adds to the beauty and diversity of the newly created world. The creation of birds, creatures that bridge the gap between earth and sky, is a testament to God's desire to fill every corner of his creation with life and beauty. Their ability to soar above the earth, to witness the world from a different perspective, reminds us of the boundless possibilities that exist within creation. As the fifth day of creation drew to a close, the earth was teeming with life. The oceans, once silent and empty, now pulsed with the energy of countless creatures. The skies, once barren, were filled with the graceful flight of birds. Imagine standing on that fifth evening, the air alive with the sounds of birdsong, the gentle lapping of waves against the shore, and the rustling of leaves in the newly formed forests. The world, bathed in the golden light of the setting sun, is a symphony of life, a testament to the creative power and boundless love of God. The creation of sea creatures and birds marked a significant turning point in the creation narrative. It brought movement and sound to the world, transforming it from a place of stillness to a realm of vibrant, interconnected life. It was a testament to God's desire to fill his creation with joy, beauty, and abundance. The fifth day, a symphony of life and movement, reminds us of the interconnectedness of all living things. It teaches us to appreciate the diversity and beauty of the natural world and to recognize the hand of the Creator in every creature, great and small. It instills in us a sense of wonder and awe at the intricate web of life, a web that sustains and enriches us all. On the sixth day of creation, God turned his attention to the land, now dry and ready to receive life. Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind, he commanded. Imagine the silence of the vast plains and verdant forests, broken only by the rustling of leaves and the murmur of streams. Then picture a flurry of movement, a symphony of sounds as creatures of all shapes and sizes emerge from the earth. The land, once barren, now teems with an astounding variety of creatures. Herds of grazing animals, antelope, deer, and buffalo roam the plains, their hooves drumming a gentle rhythm against the earth. Predators, sleek and powerful lions, tigers and bears, stalk their prey through the undergrowth, their presence maintaining the delicate balance of nature. In the treetops, monkeys swing from branch to branch, their chattering filling the air, while below, insects of every color and shape crawl amongst the fallen leaves. Their intricate designs a testament to the artistry of creation. From the smallest ant to the largest elephant, each land creature finds its place in the intricate tapestry of life. This explosion of life on land is a testament to God's boundless imagination and his love for diversity. Each creature, from the lowliest worm to the majestic lion, is crafted with care, perfectly adapted to its environment and its role in the grand scheme of creation. Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. With the land and seas teeming with life, God embarked on his most profound creation. Imagine the stillness of that sixth day, the sense of anticipation as God, the divine artist prepares to create a being unlike any other. Then, from the dust of the earth, God forms man, breathing into his nostrils the breath of life. Man, created in the image of God, is endowed with reason, creativity, and a capacity for love that sets him apart from all other creatures. Unlike the animals who are driven by instinct, man is given free will, the ability to choose between right and wrong, to act with compassion or selfishness. He is entrusted with the responsibility of caring for God's creation, of nurturing and protecting the delicate balance of nature. The creation of woman soon follows, 
formed from the rib of man, a symbol of the intimate connection between them. Together, man and woman are to be stewards of God's creation, partners in the ongoing work of caring for the earth and all its inhabitants. As the sixth day of creation drew to a close, the world was complete. The land, seas, and skies teemed with life, each creature finding its place in the intricate web of creation. And at the pinnacle of it all stood man, made in the image of God, entrusted with the care and dominion over all that had been made. Imagine standing on that sixth evening surrounded by the beauty and diversity of God's creation. The air is alive with the sounds of birdsong, the rustling of leaves, and the gentle murmur of a nearby stream. The setting sun paints the sky in a breathtaking tapestry of colors, a final flourish to a masterpiece eons in the making. The creation of man and woman marked the culmination of God's creative work, the crowning achievement of a plan set in motion at the dawn of time. It was a testament to God's boundless love, his desire to share his creation with beings capable of appreciating its beauty, its wonder, and its inherent goodness. The sixth day, a symphony of life and creation culminates with the arrival of humanity. It is a reminder of our unique place in the grand scheme of things, our responsibility to be caretakers of this planet and all its inhabitants. And it instills in us a sense of awe and gratitude for the gift of life, a gift freely given by a loving and generous creator. And so, the sixth day of creation drew to a close, culminating in the creation of humankind. The heavens and the earth, once a formless void, now teemed with life in all its diversity and splendor. A sense of completion pervaded the newly formed world, a symphony of creation reaching its crescendo. As the first Sabbath dawned, God rested. This wasn't the rest of weariness, for the divine creator knows no fatigue. It was a rest of satisfaction, of completion, a moment to pause and behold the majesty of all that had been wrought. Imagine the stillness of that first Sabbath morning. The animals moved peacefully throughout their new home. The gentle breeze carried the scent of a thousand different flowers. And over it all a sense of tranquility reigned, a testament to the divine order that now governed the cosmos. This divine rest wasn't a descent into inactivity, but a transition into a different mode of being. It was the beginning of God's eternal Sabbath, a day not bound by time, but woven into the very fabric of creation. The story of creation, as recounted in the book of Genesis, is a testament to the boundless power, creativity, and love of God. It is a story that has resonated with humankind for millennia inspiring awe, wonder, and a deep sense of connection to the divine. This narrative passed down through generations reminds us that we are not accidents but part of a grand design, a universe brought into being by a loving creator. It instills in us a sense of responsibility for the care of this planet and all its inhabitants, a call to be stewards of the extraordinary gift of life. The creation story is not merely an account of the past, it is an invitation to participate in the ongoing work of creation. It is a call to cultivate beauty, to foster harmony, and to live in gratitude for the extraordinary gift of existence. As we marvel at the wonders of the natural world, let us remember the divine artist who brought it all into being. And let us strive to live in a way that honors the legacy of creation, a legacy of wonder, beauty, and boundless possibility.